Hello and welcome to Newswire. I'm Isa Umar. Today we will be starting our conversation about the Israeli elections that concluded last night and the final vote count has continued through Wednesday. But at the time of this recording, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seems to be leading. Either way, one thing is clear. The right-wing bloc, bloc has a clear advantage over the left and it seems to be likelier to form a coalition. Now, according to posters, the turnout has been historically low in the Arab community. Netanyahu's Likud party provided activists with 1,200 hidden cameras to monitor the Arab police stations, a move that basically prompted Israel's Central Election Committee to file a police complaint. Also, these elections have taken place in a backdrop of escalating tensions with Gaza protesters who have just commemorated their one-year anniversary of the Great March of Return. Since the beginning of March last year, 270 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli gunfire across the buffer zone that separates the tiny besieged strip of 2 million Palestinians from Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu has also been facing three cases of corruption, bribery and breach of trust against him, which he calls basically a witch hunt. While the Israeli legal system has proved in the past that no one is above the law, having convicted former Prime Minister Ehud Beherk and uh, for bribery, uh, he served jail time also. And former President Moshe Katsav uh, was uh, convicted of rape. The law does not require an indicted prime minister to step down. What usually has uh, been happening is that the person steps down as part of a plea bargain or a plea deal. Now, the scene is still developing. We will be discussing with our guests how they see both contenders for the premiership and what impact will they have on their policies with their policies in the Middle East. First, I have to introduce uh, our guest. We have with us uh, from London, Mr. Daoud Abdullah. He's a political analyst. And also we have with us uh, Mr. Muslim Imran, a Palestinian activist, political analyst, joining us from Kuala Lumpur. Welcome uh, to the show. Uh, both of you, first of all, let me ask you, Mr. Dawood, how are you seeing the turnout of uh, the uh, results as 97% of the votes have been counted? It seems like Prime Minister Netanyahu is in the lead. Yes, indeed, 97%, um, and, and they all indicate that he, he, he has won, albeit narrowly. This is it, it, it's not a precedent. It, it is rooted in the history of Israeli politics, that all governments are, are usually of a, a coalition nature. And so he will, in, in coming days, uh, he has already started, in fact, the process of, of negotiating with, with other parties, the former coalition government. government. Mm -hmm. uh, Right. And the, the, the debate right now that's going on is while Benny Gantz, his main opposition, uh, and he himself are at a tie at the moment. But how Netanyahu is seemed to be leading is essentially uh, how he can form the coalition. He has a uh, majority uh, of the votes he will be getting in the end is from this right wing religious uh, and nationalist far right allies. Indeed, uh, he is really dependent on, on the settler movement, those, those groups uh, that have formed a, a union of right-wing parties at the instigation of Netanyahu himself, mm -hmm. as well as other traditionalist right-wing uh, religious parties like the Shas and uh, Israel Betenyahu, uh, led by uh, Avigdor Lieberman, the former defense minister. Mm -hmm. So all of these have coalesced well, to lend their support to him. On the other hand, his rival is depending on the center-left parties to give him the support to form a government. But they have not done very well. Meretz, for example, and the Labour Party have barely scraped through. And so the, the, the balance of power has shifted decisively uh, to the right, uh, particularly with those parties you know, of a religious and extreme nature. Right. And Mr. Muslim, what is your take on how this is evolving there in Israel as the elections have closed and the vote count has begun? What are you expecting? Any kind of shift, uh, any chances of a shift of what is uh, right now being declared as a sure shot victory for Netanyahu? Okay, uh, either the Israeli voters were choosing between um, an obvious flagrant apartheid uh, versus uh, an apartheid in disguise. And Netanyahu has uh, made it very clear that he is going to push for uh, a more offensive apartheid uh, policy if elected, and he spoke about uh, declaring the West Bank or annexing the West Bank officially uh, just uh, a day or two before elections. Mm -hmm. The opposition were uh, more, uh, I, I would say, shy in uh, uh, 
you know, uh, projecting their apartheid uh, policies, but they weren't better. Gantz is a war criminal who killed thousands of Palestinians in Gaza in 2014. It is very un unfortunate that the Israeli uh, society is now becoming more uh, morally bankrupt than ever, uh, and, and they're making a move to choose uh, flagrant apartheid. Netanyahu is going to push for more apartheid. He's going mm -hmm. to... Uh, murder most, m more Palestinians uh, than before, and right. he uses the American cover to uh, commit more war crimes. Uh, aggression on Gaza will continue under Netanyahu. Annexation of the West Bank is a matter of time. The Golan is a foregone story. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about uh, a, a war criminal who has... Uh, it's one war of the criminal the pitted power. against the other. Exactly. That's a really good point, Mr. Muslim, and I want to put this across to you, Mr. Daoud. Was it uh, prior to the election uh, irrespective of who one voted for, whether it was Benny Gantz or it was Netanyahu, the policies at the end of the day were going to be the same. Yes, this is clear. As our guest and colleague from Kuala Lumpur stated, um, ideologically, these people are, are very much similar. And in fact, it is not beyond, you know, um, the reality that Netanyahu and Gantz may form a, a coalition government. This is still on the cards. It's not a, a done deal that he would go and, and form an alliance with, you know, the religious right, etc. He mm -hmm. may ultimately, ultimately end up with a, a government with Benny Gantz, and, and that only underscores how very close they are ideologically. Right. And, and, and as a result of this, do you think was what beat the morale of the Arab community? It makes one fifth of uh, the population there in Israel, but one fifth of them. And it was one of the lowest turnout of the Arab community on the on voting day. Mr. Daoud? I, I don't think it, it had to do so much with the elections per se, but mm -hmm. it's just the, the, the general state of, 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 of life, the, the condition in Israel as a whole. I mean, recently, this is a government, uh, you know, that passed through parliament a law mm -hmm. Uh, called the Jewish uh, nation state law, mm -hmm. which effectively said that, you know, Jews have preference and, and privileges over other uh, citizens of the state. And, and, you know, if you live in, in, in such a situation where you are by law determined to be a second class citizen, this is quite de demoralizing. Why oh. go to the polls then if you are a second class citizen? Right. And in fact, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, who's one of his rallies, was extremely bigoted, uh, trying to get his voters to come out on voting day by uh, scare, trying to scare them by saying the Arabs will beat you to it. Now, Mr. Muslim, now that we've seen uh, a obvious lead and also understood that there is really no difference, whoever came into power, the policies are not going to get any better for Gaza. What options are there in terms of the Middle Eastern uh, sort of strategy that Israel holds, uh, whether it's against Iran, whether it is uh, their participation in Syria, and especially for the Palestinians, how do you think uh, things are going to shift or get worse? I think this uh, election results result should serve as a wake-up call to the Arab and Muslim nations. Many in the Arab world in particular have been buying illusion over the years, thinking that a new Israeli leadership will uh, offer them uh, a better peace proposal. Now, this election result is telling the, 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 the whole uh, region that Israel is uh, a, a, a military complex which is uh, choosing apartheid and uh, war over peace. And that's why normalization efforts in the Middle East have to stop. Now, the Palestinian leadership has to wake up. It's not... Uh, uh, you know, a, a ledger time where you can uh, bet on uh, alternatives in the Israeli society. It's very unfortunate that the Israeli society is choosing the extreme right mm -hmm. over wisdom. They are, the, and, and you know what? The American leadership is actually uh, offer them, uh, offering them drugs. It's like when someone is on drugs, mm -hmm. uh, you're supposed to help him or her, and mm -hmm. uh, the American leadership is offering them more drugs. Israel is an apartheid state, a war criminal state, and President Trump is giving them more uh, you are know, you talking about the are you referring the to the concessions are you referring to uh, president trump's concessions that he's given to netanyahu three major uh, gifts as they call it uh, given by trump uh, are you referring to those if you could elaborate for our viewers those Hyatt, three the golan heights the mm -hmm. the trump uh, declaration on jerusalem and trump's uh, attempt to undermine the palestine uh, uh, refugees right of return all these, in addition to many other... Uh, uh, also millions like of dollars in aid that he has slashed for Palestinians. 
gift to Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. And in order to stop Netanyahu's uh, arrogance, the Arab and Muslim nations, the Middle East has to wake up, they have to come together, they have to stop bickering amongst themselves, and they have to put an end to Israeli arrogance. We mm -hmm. can't give Netanyahu the opportunity, the historic opportunity to annex the Golan, the West Bank, and the rest of the Arab lands. This cannot continue. Uh, it is very unfortunate that some in the Arab world think that uh, by talking peace to Israel, they get the heart of the Americans. Uh, in fact, they, they are undermining their position in their own nations and in the Middle East and in the world in general. Mm -hmm. What uh, the Palestinians have to do is to come together, work together on bringing down occupation, and the Arabs have to follow suit. They have to come together, work together, and bickering am amongst themselves, and bring down Israeli occupation through all means possible. Uh, talking peace to Netanyahu while he's declaring war on them is a mere stupidity. We should stop this kind of uh, uh, logic. We should mm -hmm. uh, consolidate our uh, uh, you know, uh, capabilities and end Israeli occupation. Israel is becoming a flagrant apartheid. We have to tell a spade. Uh, it is a spade. Israel is an apartheid. We have to bring down apartheid. Boycott, divest, sanctions, etc. Right. are the way out. And Mr. Daoud, uh, President Trump had also announced that after the elections, he will reveal the greatest uh, deal of uh, recent times, the peace deal uh, to end the conflict, essentially. How do you see that? Do you have any, uh, what is your view on how that might turn out? Well, uh, we, first of all, we don't have any, any uh, de detailed information about what contains in, in, in this in so-called deal of the century. But uh, all the reports suggest that it, it, it demands, it requires extreme concessions on behalf of the Palestinians, the right of return, for example, acceptance mm -hmm. of the annexation of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and of course, uh, parts of the West Bank. So, uh, you know, this is something that is, is very hard for any Palestinian Palestinian leader to accept, and, and so far, uh, Mahmoud Abbas and, and his uh, Palestinian authority in, in Ramallah has resisted it. They have given a clear indication that they will not sit at, any, at the negotiating table as long as Jerusalem is off, you know, uh, the negotiations. Uh, as we know, you know, when they signed the Oslo Accord, of which he was the art architect, mm. they deferred issues like the refugees and Jerusalem for what they call the final status issue. Now, having removed it from the from the agenda, as it were, it seems that there is nothing to negotiate about. Yep. It's it's a dictat being being enforced or imposed upon them by by the Americans. But it is a pipe dream on the part of the Americans to think that this will bring peace. This is only going to complicate matters, you know. As already we've seen, you know, on the issue of Jerusalem, it was rejected overwhelmingly by the international community. At least 128 countries voted against it in the General Assembly. So you may have a few countries, you know, in, in the Pacific who will, will vote and support such measures. But overwhelmingly, uh, it will be rejected. And, to, and to, to declare or to pretend that this would bring peace to the, to the Middle East is merely a pipe dream. No, but it's, uh, don't you also question what effect these resolutions, whether in the, in the General Assembly or their accords signed uh, between these parties, the Oslo Accords I'm referring to, which uh, the, Israel has completely and thoroughly violated and taken advantage of. What hope is there of these international forums uh, where w unless the U.S. puts any pressure on Israel, there seems to be absolutely no effect on how they go about doing their business? Mr. Muslim. This was for you. If you Sorry. hold that thought, Mr. Daud, I'll come back to you. Mr. Muslim, what do you about that? Okay, I think these international resolutions are important because they are isolating Israel in the long run. Yes, Israel has and enjoys an American protection now, but things are shifting. A balance of power is shifting. We are moving towards a multipolar uh, international uh, power system. Uh, yes, it might take uh, some more time, but Palestinians are making sure that they are protecting their presence in Palestine until such changes happen. Uh, the more how, how are they making sure of that? How, if you were to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the more, the more international resolutions, the more international initiatives, uh, the more uh, isolated Israel will be. Yes, Netanyahu enjoys a cordial relationship with President Trump and enjoys some, relation, some sort of relationship with some <laughs> Arab and Muslim leaders. But, but believe me, he, he, has, he has lost he, uh, any um, 
uh, appeal to the, the, the general public internationally in Europe, in the U.S. itself. Uh, so you, the, you're the, the, referring the to a global shift of opinion Israel. towards Netanyahu's policies. There's also a voice within uh, Israel's borders. Critics say that if uh, Netanyahu is re-elected, he will do actually more damage to Israel's democracy. And citing an example is what he has already done is turned his supporters against what was once respected state institutions like uh, the judiciary. Ten years ago, nobody has uh, had the courage to label Israel as an apartheid publicly. Uh, now Israeli liberals and activists, Jewish activists internationally, as well as the rest of the international community are labeling Israel as an apartheid. So what Netanyahu is doing is a huge damage to the Israeli system. And Israel is not a democracy. I don't subscribe to, to that myth. But he is doing more damage to the Israeli political system, and he is losing more in friends internationally. He can rely on Trump, but Trump will be there for another two years, maybe another six years. After that, is he going to rely on the United States protection when he loses his European allies, when he loses the international uh, uh, sympathy with, uh, with, with uh, his uh, state? Uh, Israel is losing internationally. Mm -hmm. It started, the, you know, the, this uh, international solidarity with the Palestinians and boycott campaigns. They started with individuals and started with civil society groups. They are now becoming an official policy of some states. Ireland voted a few weeks ago to boycott Israeli illegal products, uh, products of illegal settlement. Malaysia has made uh, a move. Uh, Kuwait is making a move. This is, uh, you know, it's, it's on the rise. These sorts of international stands and statements are increasing. They will encourage each other. And one day, Israel will find itself completely isolated, just like apartheid South Africa. Mm -hmm. It took uh, decades for the apartheid in South Africa to collapse. It mm -hmm. might take Israel a few more years, but it will happen. And yeah. that requires the Palestinians to stay strong, stand strong on the ground. And uh, uh, trust me, they, they are doing so. Okay. Uh, it's just that they have to put more sacrifices in the years to come. Um, it's very unfortunate that the international uh, situation is allowing for Israel to commit more war crimes. Right. But uh, this is the story of every national liberation struggle. It, it uh, had to pay heavy price for its, uh, uh, to achieve freedom. its goals. Right. And we are willing as Palestinians to pay whatever it takes to get our freedom and liberation. Mr. Daoud, what do you think? Do you agree with Ms. Muslim? Is a global shift taking place in these resolutions uh, by the General Assembly, by the UN, are actually uh, taking an effect uh, against uh, Israel's uh, global image? Absolutely, I could not agree any any more. I mean, we we seen we are seeing it here in, in Europe, uh, in the United Kingdom. There is an almost fifty percent shift in public opinion supporting uh, the the rights of the Palestinian people. Um, we look in Africa, for example. Uh, Israel is about to close its embassy in South Africa because in South Africa, and this is symbolically important, that the the, the Republic of South Africa who you know, they brought down the system of apartheid. They are now, you know, in the forefront on the African continent against, you know, what is happening in, in, in Palestine. And as a result, last year when, when Netanyahu tried to form, form uh, or, or convene rather what was called the African-Israeli Summit in, in, in Lomé in, in Togo, it was boycotted uh, by most African countries and, and the whole thing collapsed. And, and that is an indication that despite the fact that he may give some aid and military assistance and intelligence assistance to some countries in Africa, politically, he's not making inroads on the continent. And we hope that in Asia also, that this will be you know, manifested you know, to the same degree. No, but doesn't it concern you while I, this global is hard to deny the evidence is there. But at the same time, uh, a scholar and academic recently came out with a book, uh, Normal Finkelstein of uh, Gaza and Inquest of Martyrdom. And it, it was a damning report on how strong the Israeli lobby is, not only just in uh, countries like the U.S. with the politicians, but also with the humanitarian aid organizations that are supposed to be objective and which affects the reporting on the ground of what a huge humanitarian crisis Palestine is. Doesn't that concern you? And also, we saw in the recent path how the Goldstone report was completely uh, uh, taken back. I mean, is, is this something uh, too soon to be optimistic about, given the current circumstances, Mr. Muslim? You know, the uh, international uh, uh, development uh, says that there is an information uh, revolution. People now know more than any time before everything that happens, happens around them all over the world. 
And this is going to be a big blow for Israel. Israel is losing the moral battle. They are becoming a bankrupt nation. Uh, when the international community sees the Israeli war crimes in Gaza and the international community sees what Israel is doing in the West Bank, it, is, it will be very difficult for all these Israeli lobbies to uh, portray a good image of Israel. They can mm -hmm. pump in a lot of money, but mm -hmm. money alone won't uh, change things. You know, when, when they are losing the image, the, the, the battle over the image, uh, that will make it very difficult for not only uh, politicians and activists to defend Israel, but also businesses. And businesses are always concerned about making uh, profit. They are not going to bet on the, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, pariah state. Israel is becoming a pariah state. They are not going to go invest. They are not going to go do business with a state that is uh, boycotted and isolated internationally and not welcome internationally. That's why I, I think uh, what is happening in the world today, the trends uh, that are happening in information technology are actually being and helping the Palestinians struggle. They are not working for Israel. Israel can spend as much as it wants on uh, you know, research and development in order to um, um, be ahead in technology. But you can have all the weapons you, you have, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't buy a, a good image. When uh, you do a mistake, you right. blow all your efforts. And we have seen uh, in the Middle East other examples of really wealthy, uh, uh, rich nations making stupid mistakes that have uh, costed them heavily on, in the PR battle. So mm -hmm. Israel can spend as, as much as it wants, Right. But uh, trust okay. me, the developments internationally are serving and helping the Palestinian mm -hmm. struggle. Thank you so much, Mr. Daoud Abdullah and Mr. Muslim Imran. Uh, the story of Palestine continues to evolve as the election results come in. One can only hope that, uh, as our guests have highlighted, the image of Israel continues to deteriorate morally, uh, 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 that soon there will be a solution for the conflict. With that, I'd like to take a quick short break. I'll be right back.